Hey y'all, welcome back. Glad to have you guys joining back in with us. We are going to finish up our irrigation, so let's have Kelly explain what's going on. All right, we already did a video on running our PVC. We ran it from our spigot out to the main garden area through the individual beds. Everything's underground, so that way we don't have to worry about tripping over it, stepping on it. If we do step on it, it won't crush. Because the year before, we just had this, which is soft, especially in the sun. It gets really soft and it will smash and kink. So we got this all done. Um, we're ready now to run the individuals. We got all of our vegetables in, uh, squash, zucchini, tomatoes, peppers, everything is ready for watering. So she spent two hours today out there watering this morning, all of our new plants. So we're gonna try to take care of that problem. So she's not doing that. We're gonna go over a few of the key components of what we're gonna be using out there. And I'll explain it as we're doing it and we'll go from there. So, like I said, we're gonna start with the, basically the PVC that's coming out of the ground, and then we're gonna put some uh, check balls in there. These are basically on and off switches, and you just put this in there, and then that way, right now we don't have any green beans in a bed, so there's no sense in having water through there, so that'd be just a waste of water. Now, one thing this is gonna do is save us a lot of money on watering, because we're only gonna be watering the plant instead of the whole bed. So this, like right now, the green bean bed will be shut off, but where our other plants are, these are going to be open. So later though, when like the peanuts come out or the green beans are done and there's something else going in there, we can turn that on or off throughout the year as we change to our different crops. So that's important to have an on and off for that. So there's a lot of few little things. Um, we're going to be using PVC into our black flexible line. Now this is flexible. so. This will be coming off. We're going to be using different sizes. We've got elbows depending on where we're at with the threads and these are just attachments. Now these will screw into our PVC and we'll show you this when we're out there as we're doing it. And then this will then just slide onto here. Now these are on, all of these are designed uh, for around 10 gallons of zero to, well this one's at zero to one gallon here. Um, I'll show you the different ones here in a second. Let me get a little idea. You want to come in real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. These are what we're going to be using on this flexible. This is a small flexible. And then you can join the end of different ones. So these here has a little hole about every 12 inches. This is a different style. Now we're going to use this for like our carrots and stuff like that. But these here, these black ones here, this one here is just a simple piece that's gonna clip in to here. So by using this here, it's got a little pointy on it, and then this just pokes a hole in here, and then you're gonna plug this in. So now, wherever you've ran this, you can run this to your carrots or whatever you're wanting to run, this brown, which is a little bit different, and this is basically a half gallon per hour. Now we have different fittings here, show you real quick you've got these are adjustable and like I say it's the same thing you've got a small insert that you can either run into the end of one of these black ones if that's say that's where you want to end it um, these more if you're going to end it with one of these would be more of this style where your stake in the ground so say you have a uh, beets or things like that where you have a small area this would just attach here and then you can run this all the way from a half gallon, or no, it's the one gallon, all the way down to nothing, basically, on these. So these are basically the same thing with a stake built in. Or they also sell your stakes, but then you just clip that to your black hose, and then you can run either this style, which is a spray, like a sprinkler head would go, or a sh actually just a straight like a fountain, I should say. This one here actually spins as the water comes out. And this is like the ones you played in as a kid and they sit there and spin on you. So this one right here will actually spin and we're gonna actually turn this upside down and put it on top of our uh, tr uh, trellis out there and let it kind of miss the area. Now you've got different ones. You've got those, you've got mid ones. Now these here, if you have this ran along the ground um, you maybe run this down the main bed and the thicker stuff and then the thinner stuff you run to different plants so what you could do is you could put this in the middle so you put one side in one 
and then you can put another one and just keep on trucking like this. Now, these are need to be cut because they're from last year. That's why we took them apart so we can redo them. But when you cut it back here, it won't fall off like that. Um, now this will leak a half gallon an hour. So you just plant that by the flower. You'd run this over to your next plant, cut it, get another one that's same thing. You put it in there and you just keep going from plant to plant. Now this one that I grabbed here is an ending. So say the last plant, say you run this straight down the middle of your plants. You could just, like we have here from last year, a bunch of little ones that we've already been using. And then you just put this one in and then this will run right, whoop, backwards. Put this one in and then it'll stop and it'll drip right there. Now that's where things like this come in handy because you can put that drip right where you want it. And wind, bugs, plants, animals, nothing. It'll stay right where it wants to be, where you want it to be, I should say. So we've got those. We've got these are simple compressions. We'll be using a few of these. These just, you push these in and then this will tighten down and it'll be solid. You won't be able to pull that back out. These are good for your corners and turns and stuff because like I say, this will, if you get too far, it will kink. And if it's kink, you ain't getting no water through there. And that's basically how you stop this stuff. It's, it's basically, it'll bend over and it'll slip over here on both and it'll just hold it in that position so that I thought I had everything out to show y'all but I'll show you here in a minute when we get out there but that's what we're going to be doing well these are basically the elements that we're going to be using or components I should say that we're going to be using and we'll explain them how we're using them and where we're using them um, we've got see, more T's we've got elbows we've got straights if you cut it and it's too short we've got a little bit of everything so you'll be slowly You'll buy kits, uh, you'll buy components, like one or two of these come in a kit. And over the years, as you start adding, you can start adding to your flowers. Like this year, we're going to be adding flowers, we're adding our strawberries. And what's great about this is the flexibility of it. You can just keep increasing it and adding to it piece by piece. And just start with a basic kit you can buy at the, any box store. We'll have your basic kits. Um, but we'll start here and we'll see where we can get today. And we'll see you out there in the garden here in a few minutes. All right. So what we got is this is the hard line that we ran across and out from under this bed. And this is gonna come up and down to our strawberries. So this is that fitting I was talking about that you put your black line on. And then this screwed into our PVC. And I'm gonna come over here and this is that angle I was telling you about to not try to bend this because it will pinch, but you can run right up to something and then come straight up. So all it is is you keep, make sure this is loose. Make sure this is loose. You press this in far as you can get it down in there and then you just tighten it up and what it does is it comes up and it smashes that now we got that attached we're gonna run this up I'm gonna run it underneath here so we'll figure out a way to attach this here in a few minutes but we're gonna have to come off this in a couple ways we're gonna need to do our elephant ears which are here so let's actually see we haven't seen them yet I'll show you how we're going to do those, but let's see what we got under here first. I covered these the other day when we had all that frost. Wow. There's our elephants. There's one. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. There's a big one right there. there. Oh, this one's even got a leaf started over here. So, the leaves did their job. They protected it. Oh, there's more everywhere I keep going. There's more in the middle. Here's another one in the middle. Here's another one over here, another one here. So, well, looks like they survived. These are kind of, uh, depend on how you protect them. Elephant ears are not really, they're considered an annual in our area. Now you get around grow zone nine and below, they're pretty much a perennial. But in this area, if you mulch them real good, they'll usually come back every year for you. So they're a, a careful, perennial in this area if you're careful with them but this is what we're going to do so what we're going to do here these are the ones I was talking about the stakes and these are just we can adjust this from zero to one gallon so I'm going to put one of these in each like on both sides here here in a second but what I got to do is get from there to here and that's where these little plugs in I was showing you so let's put one of those in So we got a few pieces here. 
I'm gonna need that over there. So we're gonna come off of this here, down where it's gonna be hid. And that's where this little tool is, the little pokey thing. So I'm just gonna stick that and it punks a hole in it. Now there's our hole. Now we just take one of our pieces here. This is just connect. You can connect a bunch of little ones if you had it. But I'm just gonna take that. Ah, pops right in. And see, it's such a low pressure system. That's all it takes. So that's where your regulator comes in. So then you take this. Oh, let me cut that off because we, like I say, we reuse them every year. So they get a little shorter each time, but that's okay. So now we got a fresh. Stick that on there. All right. Now we're gonna run this over to there. Let me go to the other side now. Now what we want to do on these is we're wanting some coverage here. So I don't want to put a bunch of little individuals. So that's why I'm going to use these expandable ones. And we're going to use the uh, adjustables. That way we can figure out how much water we need. So what I'm going to use here, being I've got two of these in here, I'm going to use a T. It's just a simple, simple, keep forgetting to cut these ends off. All right. So put that in there. Get in as good as you can. They slide in. The warmer it is, the better they are. So we're going to go to both of these. So we're going to use two small ones of these. So I'm just going to cut this in half. So we can move it around as needed. Because right now, I'm not sure where my bulbs are. Because these are big baseball sized bulbs under there. We don't want to harm them. So I'm just kind of figuring we're going to be in this area. So I'm going to use a larger piece. So I'm going to stick this in here. And then to one side of this. And one of them. The other way. This one. All right. Now we'll figure out where these go and we can just place them anywhere you want them. But we're just gonna kind of set them right here for right now. And that's as simple as it is. And these just are adjustable. So it's really not a hard thing. Once you get going, you can see how easy that is. It's just a mind frame of getting it started and after you've done it a couple times, and actually in about the first hour, after you've done it for an hour or so, it's just gonna get easier and easier. And so, we're just gonna run this over here. And we're gonna shut it off, like we talked about earlier, and then we're gonna go ahead and start, but we're just gonna show you where we're gonna start this. But this is what I was talking about. We're gonna run this over to our strawberries. This is the other style. And this is the simple crimp that I was trying to explain earlier. But we're gonna crimp this off and then start our strawberries. And then this line is done. And then we're just gonna start on our garden and work our way through. But that's what's so nice about this system is you can change it to however you want year to year. So we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so we finally got everything done. We still got a little cleaning, but we, before we lose light, we wanna show you what we got done. We ran from our faucet over down here. Kind of got your filter in here at the bottom and you got a regulator here and your timer so we, we can set our timer here but make sure you have a regular ours is at 25 and that's what all of our fittings are for and then it's got a filter at the bottom that way it doesn't uh, the regulator keeps it of a backflow so it doesn't go back into the house so you don't make sure you have that backflow in there you don't want any of this contaminants going back into the house so make sure you when you buy your kit it comes with everything you'll need so we ran that underground as you've seen before now what we've done is every plant basically has its own. We have one gallon per hour in our taters here. These are half gallon. And what we did is went every one of them's got a drip to it. And then we got a shutoff valve right here so that we can shut this off. If there's nothing in this bed, I can shut this off. And then uh, everything is getting watered in here. As it went underground, another shutoff. And this squash here, every one of them has its own. And once again, the taters have their own going in. 
Now what we did over here, being we got a lot of crops, we got the uh, karabi and the uh, beets over here, we went with sprinklers. These do a 360, they spin. And it covers the whole bed, and that way you're not having to worry about doing individual half gallon sprinklers. The peas, the same way, we just did them in between. We've got a spinner in each one, and that's covering this whole bed. As you can see, it's nice and wet. And look at how pretty the peas are. The peas are doing awesome. Can't wait to get some. And it's got its own shutoff valve at the end there. Every bed, we can shut it off now. And as you can see, each tomato plant is getting its water from drips. These are half, half a gallon per hour. And look how stocky. We remember, when we plant these as seeds, and look how beautiful and thick these seeds are. Everything is just coming out beautiful. Nice, stocky, thick stalks. Can't argue. I mean, that's what they're supposed to look like. So this is everything's got is the carrots. We did the same thing. Hold on. I'm done waiting. We did the same thing. We just run a sprinkler system. It's just, just a mist coming out of here, and it's going to cover this whole area. As you can see, it's nice and wet. Behind you again, we went off of this one, and now this is a 180, and this is coming over, and you can feel it's getting this side of this. This one coming off this side is coming this way, hitting it. So we're hitting it from both sides, just a mist on both sides for the lettuce there. Right and then, there, hitting to here, and right there, hitting to here. And we kind of keep our plants around this area because we got room here. So as we do plants, uh, as we plant flowers and stuff, we can keep them, put them around this side right here, and that'll keep this area watered for us. So we can, that's what we did last year, and it worked out real well. Kind of, kind of, you have that afternoon shade, so you get the morning sun, afternoon shade. So anything that's starting, baby, you get a nice, you know, you don't get it overbearing, too much sun on it. These are our beans. We've got blue lakes. We got three different kinds, and the Roma beans up front. And so we just the same thing. Now, once these come up, where I know there's beans actually taking place. Right there's a sprinkler, and right there's a sprinkler. Yeah. This this goes no wet. Everything's 180 that way. Nothing on this side. So once the plants come up and they get about three or four inches up, and I get everything thinned out where I want it, I'll run individual water. That's why we have the black tube that runs through it, and then everything will have its own half gallon drip, just like the squash does. This will be peanuts here coming up eventually. The, the, she wants peanuts this year, so we're gonna try peanuts so she can try peanut butter. The broccoli, we ran that same way. Spinners, look at the head on this thing. That's ready to eat. I mean, that is gorgeous. So those that have been with us since the beginning, you seen them when they were nothing, just little bitty things, and now they're just ready to go. <laughs> here we did the same thing. Our kale, uh, we got cauliflower and kale in here. Each one's got its own dripper all the way through, just kind of snake it through. And cauliflower. Cauliflower and broccoli and a few broccolis, yes. And then that side over there is her favorite. So what we did is we ran that, uh, the brown drip, every 12 inches there's a drip. So we kind of ran it down through there for your cucumbers and melons. We have our runner beans now in there. So they'll be coming up, you can't see them now, but next well, a couple weeks we'll be able to see them. But her favorite thing is she put her spinners. I put some sprinklers up top. And I, I walk down through it. there on a hot day. You probably can't right see it. Right about. Mm, but there. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. We'll walk through it. You're just getting. It's like it's sprinkling out. But this is getting all this on the inside. Also. So we did, ran over to our our grapes, our uh, rhubarb, underground of course, over. Now every eggplant's got its own, and every pepper has got its own. So everything is getting watered. The taters, we gotta show you the taters. We actually have taters coming up while we're out here. Look at the taters. All the different little size taters in here. Isn't that awesome? That's what they look like. That's what a potato looks like after you, well, you've seen us plant them. So now that's what they look like two weeks later. This one has different ones. As you can see, this is a different kind than this. So them are started, these are not. 
But oh, there is a baby right there. And there's yeah. a baby right there. Well, each one, you have some that are early summer, late summer, different summer, you know, times they mature at. But it's just exciting when you start seeing them come up. Did you seen all the when they were chitting, they were running, sending those runners out. Well, once they hit daylight after it was some nutrients, they don't stop running anymore, and they actually become flowers and get leaves, which is a whole lot different than you seen when we were planting them. Did you so, say when they were chitting? When they were chitting. <laughs> when they were getting their eyes. Chitting is the process of getting to form eyes. Okay, I just still think it's funny. <laughs> okay, I know. So everything is going good. So now everything in our garden, finally, finally, we have water everywhere. So in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, before the sun comes up and it gets hot, they'll get a good bath, get a deep feed, probably an hour. And we'll try that and see how it does. It, just keep an eye on them. Now, another thing to watch for, let's say like you have cauliflower here and you have kale. So these are pretty much the same. So they're gonna take the same amount of water, but watch when you're doing it. Just for example, uh, if you had something that was a little heavier feeder or drinker, it might, you can notice that if they start getting pale and yellow and stuff, you might need to change that half gallon to a gallon. So pay attention to your plants for the next couple weeks. They'll tell you if they're getting enough water or too much water, or not enough water, they'll let you know. So if you pay attention to your plants, being out here, you're gonna see if you're doing it right, not enough water, so kind of pay attention to that. Um, but I'm just glad it's finally done and that's a hour or two hours you don't have to water every morning. So. Yeah, that's true. Now that's I can work on that pool over there we opened. Finally got our pool open. <laughs> oh, and the strawberries. Oh, that's something else. Yeah, let's look at the we strawberries. Did the strawberries last video. Notice there is a lot of water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run another row of strawberries under here and just let this, maybe put a couple more holes in this to let it drain a little quicker. But I think that's gonna be enough water to run two of them because we're using the brown in this. To do one down there. So we'll do one more row here of strawberries and I think there'll be plenty of water and we'll try it. If we have to add more, we'll have to. That's all trial and error, that's what gardening's all about. But these are the ones we transplanted. Some are doing really good, but if you'll notice, even the ones that are not doing good, you'll notice when they transplant, these were the babies from over there. So they weren't very well rooted in the first place, but all this is fresh green. So they're gonna be beautiful here in the next week or two. So even though they didn't do well, you think, you look, they're healthy, they're there. So that's why we want them, that's why we took all the berries off, that's why we took all the runners off. So that way they can concentrate on rooting and making this nice and green. So next year, we will have beautiful strawberries, beautiful strawberries here, not this year, but next year. The strawberries over there, we got a ton of strawberries starting. So come June, we should have more than we can imagine. I think that's it for our watering right now. We, we're gonna have to add some more to the different watering, uh, the flower pots and stuff like that. But the garden is finally, finally watered, complete. Okay, y'all, we'll let you see everything one last time. Okay, y'all. Have an awesome day. Um, you guys be sure to like, share, and subscribe. When you subscribe, you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Because have an amazing day and smile for us. Bye.